Hi, I'm Ken Murphy, Program Manager for ArtsNL, and this is a walkthrough of the app online application for the sustaining program for professional arts organizations. Now, once you've been registered on our online application system and you've uh, signed on to our, uh, our, 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 to our system, uh, you'll land on your home page. And this is what your home page looks like. So this is a fake organization that I use for testing. So you probably won't have as many applications as I have here. You shouldn't. Um, but first, you'll have a funding opportunity section, which will list the uh, applications you can uh, you can uh, uh, use and apply for funding, use of, to apply for funding. And uh, your, app, your applications, if you have any, for example, a annual operating may be in here if you're a new applicant uh, or in the future, your past sustaining applications will show here. Nomination support, that's for arts awards. Uh, you don't need to worry about that. And requires attention would be, for example, if you do get a grant, your grant acceptance contract would show up here, or a final report form would show up here if you do get a grant as well. So uh, th that's what you'd find there. So we're going to apply for an application today. So I'm actually going to, I've already started one here, so it's probably not going to let me submit one, but we're going to try and we're going to do it anyway, and we'll get at least to that section. So this is for the sustaining program. So first of all, you do need to confirm that you are eligible to apply for sustaining. And if you're not sure of that, uh, please contact me at the Arts Council and I'll be able to uh, request some documentation and then confirm that for you. Uh, the requirements for the sustaining have been updated this year for 2020. Uh, so please know that, they, uh, that, that you need to make sure you're, you're, you are meeting them. So I'm just gonna open an application here. So apply now, let me get an application open. The first thing the application tells you is to click save draft at the bottom of the page right here and get used to doing that because you'll be doing it every time you add something to this document, you should be clicking save draft. So let's do that. And you'll see the application is now started. It's got a file number here uh, and it's uh, uh, got some more information in this section. One thing I'll point out is here to see the program guidelines before starting. So you could have done that at the beginning before you open the application, but you can also do it here. And there they are. There's the list of the program guidelines and the CADAC requirements as well for the Canadian Arts Database. Uh, so uh, those are there as well for you. Now, looking at this application, so the first thing uh, I'll note is one, two, three, four, five, uh, there are five uh, tabs across the page here. So every time we click on one of those, it's going to bring us to a different section of the application. The organizational details here. So this is information about your organization. This is a fake one, of course, I've made up, but this should have the actual information about your registered organization uh, when you submit this or when you log in to your homepage. The CADAC ID, it's very important. You must have a CADAC ID. So if you're not already registered on the Canadian Arts Database, you must be registered there and I have to approve your registration and ask CADAC staff to set one up for you. So I need to confirm your eligibility before you do that. If you don't have that, you won't have this, uh, this information if you don't have, uh, if you're not registered there and you won't be able to submit an application. This star here indicates a required field and that is a required field. So I'm gonna make one up. just to use here for this, uh, for this one, uh, registered not-for-profit. So how long has your organization been a not-for-profit? I'm gonna say since this date on nine. Right. 25th, 2009. And now application brief. Have you applied for this program? Are you currently receiving funding from the program? So if you're not, if you're a new applicant, just say no. That's fine, just clarifies for us. Uh, grant amount requested. So this would be actually after you've completed all your financial forms and you've seen your requests there uh, on the CADAC uh, documents uh, for the upcoming year. And this is just for the upcoming year. So year one of the funding cycle. So I'm gonna say, 
put in a number there now. I need to confirm this with the financial documents that you submit, so that you're requesting this amount uh, on the CADAC financial form. And my last completed fiscal year, so I'm going to say that it was uh, March 31st, 2019. Um, it, you, you will have your own fiscal year, obviously. Uh, with this program, if you are um, applying and your fiscal year is less than six months before the deadline, so if your fiscal year is, is, is after August uh, annually, then you will be allowed to submit your financial statements on your previously completed uh, fiscal year and, and use that as your last completed year uh, when you fill out the CADAC forms. Uh, so please be aware of that. So uh, you can actually do that. So if you're in that case, it will be, if I, mine was October, it would be October 2018, for example, as my last completed fiscal year. The current board members, because they change, you do actually have to list them uh, every time you do this application. So I'm just uh, going to list you here, the place of residency. Are they over 18? Yes. Just uh, three here. If you have a lot of uh, board members, uh, this can get to get lo a bit long, but uh, that's fine. But it does need to be put in there because, it, as I said, these can change. Save. If you see a save button, click the save button. Uh, and then we can close that because that's completed. Again, this is required. If it's uh, if it's uh, not there, uh, the program will alert you. So uh, financial details. So earned revenue. This is percentage. So this would be what percentage of your earned revenue uh, earned revenue was of your overall revenue last year. So let's say that was thirty five percent. Public sector funding was. 45% and these should total 100. So, okay, 15% fundraising and 5% other. Um, now let's look at fees paid. So this is for your management staff, your team staff. So. You may have an artistic director, and let's say that's 50,000. Uh, make sure you don't put in number signs here, just numbers is fine. Your general manager, well, you may not have one of those. Maybe your artistic director does everyone, so you can say zero. Uh, or if you have a general manager, absolutely put in their, their fee, their, their salary there as well. As well. Uh, the average fee paid, professional artists. Uh, so basically, I'm going to say I'm a, a theater organization, so I'm going to say uh, $800 per week is the average fee I paid my professional staff, uh, artistic staff this year. Uh, does your organization use students? I'm going to say yes. And the rate of pay is going to be $700 for cost of students, so that's nothing. And the notes is a uh, I have summer student employment uh, with my organization. Uh, use non-professional. I'm going to say yes, we do occasionally. And I'm going to say, because I may have had a production in which I had uh, community-based people because I needed a choral piece or a choir or a chorus as part of a, a production. And I'm going to say $100. dollar honorarium for be part of a chorus in the play because I needed 30 of them. Now that I've completed this section, I just click save draft. And that's all in there for me. Uh, click save draft often as you complete this application every time you add something. If you try to go out of the application without clicking save draft, 
uh, it'll ask you if you're sure you want to leave or stay click stay and then click save draft because if you leave without saving it you will lose basically you're getting that if you want to leave or stay because uh, you haven't saved uh, and you're trying to leave the the application form and again i know some of these may require some a little bit of research and checking back uh, and that's fine. You can submit something, say draft, go out of this completely, come back in, in two days later, the information will be there and then do the next part if you want to. So you don't have to rush to get it all done in one sitting at all. Okay. You can see these ones are set up as, as dollar ones, so they do it automatically. All right, let's go to the meat and potatoes of this application, which is the second tab. So the first one's pretty easy. I'm gonna say what discipline I'm working in. It's gonna be theater. And the next thing I had to do is upload a certificate of employment. A certificate of incorporation, I'm sorry. Because I'm a new organization, it's not required, but because I'm saying I'm new, I will have to upload that and I will be looking for that uh, when I review your application. Browse here. So we're in the documents here, and I have a certificate of incorporation here. Please note these documents I'm uploading here all must be PDF documents. So if you don't have this in a PDF format, put it in a PDF format. You'll it'll be need to be in that format before you can upload it. Uh, Word won't be Word documents things won't be uploaded here. I select that, click open. And now it's there. So I just close that. And there we are. It's right in my application. So assessors and I will be able to click on this, open it. It'll open up in a in another box and we'll be able to see what you've done. Next is your organization's respectful workplace policy. And this is a new addition to the application and it aligns similarly to if you are applying to Canada Council to they ask for a similar kind of document. Again, I'm going to upload this. Browse. Want me to do that twice. And there I have my respectful workplace policy document ready to upload. Close, and there we have it in the application. The next section is going to be information that I'm going to want to copy and paste in here because this is information that I would have done up probably in a Word document uh, typed up in detail and this would have been a large part of the paper part of your application the next few questions so what i'm going to do is open up this document to uh show you that i've got some each of these i've got a section written up for so the first one is the organizational history and uh, that includes the organizational mandate, artistic mission, highlights of works they've done in the past. I don't want to see everything you've done unless you've not been around very long. You may have to show me everything. An impact the organization has had on the arts in Newfoundland and Labrador. So what are you guys doing to uh, impact the arts? What's your role in that landscape? So here I've got uh, organizational history and activities. So this is a gibberish document, by the way, but uh, it, it does break it out in, 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 in a format, in paragraphs. Uh, please note in the formatting, things like tables and, uh, and a lot of bullet points uh, don't format well uh, uh, in these. So they're very much text-based uh, um, sections here. So please use you know, mostly text and, and a breakdown that way. If you have other documents that are formatted like tables or things like that, that you wanna add to the uh, application later just to give a further clarification of it you can do that here under support materials there is a place to add things later to clarify um, information on, on programming like that that can be more formatted in in, in a different kind of context but this is really text-based so uh, i want to clarify that for you uh, next the artistic directors or executive directors a vision for the organization for the next three years, and that's your leadership person, your staff person. What's their vision for the development of the organization over the next three years? Where do they want to take it? Uh, what's the plan they have? So it's really the vision and the, uh, the goals of the organization over the next three years. So again, 
I have a document for that. This would have been done up, written up beforehand. It would have taken me hours to get this done and just the way I like it. And now I'm just uh, off, you know, so I wouldn't be online doing this. And now I'm just putting this document together. I'm going to copy and paste it into the application. And we'll continue on for the uh, organization's activities for the current or last year. So what you applied for your previous year uh, for your season, that's what you're reporting on now. So this is your chance to report on, well, here's what I said I was gonna do, here's what we did uh, last year. So here's the list of everything we did. And if there are changes in that, note them as well in that document. So uh, I've got a uh, list of your last two years, potentially, if you're a new applicant, it could, you may wanna list what you've been doing the last couple of years as well, just to show uh, that you've been uh, around for a couple of years. Oh, it is there. Very good. And you can see the word counts here. I've got pretty generous word counts, like 6,000 words. That's a lot for that. But uh, if you go over, it'll tell you uh, and you can edit. Uh, but uh, that, that's, that's, uh, you shouldn't have any issues with the word counts. Also, you don't have to say 6,000. As I said, I'm being very generous uh, on these. It shouldn't take that much to explain, but I do need some organizations do a lot and they do have to explain a lot uh, in, in these documents. So I don't wanna feel that every, anyone's not having the chance to say what they feel they need to say. But that said, please be succinct and you don't certainly don't need to expand further if you said everything you need to say. So next up is the organization's plans for the next three years. So that is a lot to talk about. Uh, so I also have a document on that here. So we'll, again, you spent hours and hours doing this document. Now you're just copying and pasting it into the form online. Find the organization's history of providing local employment, professional development, arts admin, for your arts admin uh, people, your staff, your board, outreach to the general public, fundraising activities to support your organization, partnerships, exchanges, anything like that that helps show the work your organization has been doing. And again, you've written this all up in another document. Get all kinds of information on this here. And copy, paste that in here. And finally, the narrative report on the complete uh, financial year as reported in your financial statements. So really, uh, if there's any issues or questions on your financial statements, you know, was it a good year? Was it a bad year? Were there challenges? Your financial statements and the forms you submit on CADOC don't tell, they give us all the numbers, but they don't tell the story. And a lot of times, uh, a, a little more explanation is needed. If you have a surplus or a deficit, or if it's a significant growing surplus, we need to know what's happening with that. So RSNL now has a requirement that if it's, if your accumulated unrestricted surplus is greater than 25% uh, or, a greater five, or, or a deficit of more than 25% of your last year's um, uh, expenses, then we need an explanation and a plan for what you're going to do either to reduce a significant sur unrestricted surplus or to uh, manage a significant deficit. And this is a place where you'd certainly do that, but also anything else that's happening with your organization or has happened with your organization as the past year. I've had instances where someone had funding delayed or they got a grant, but they had to push it over extra years because they after, over uh, over a couple of years because they actually didn't get the check until into the next fiscal year. So it causes confusion that way. So sometimes just basic things like that to clarify how the finances are working out and why you are in the financial position you are in is, are really important. And this is the place to do that. So again, you've done that work. You've uh, uh, done the explanation and here's a some information on that. So let's say like three pages should be plenty. Also, if there are like significant, because uh, the CADAC forms will show significant changes. Uh, so let's say your earned revenue this year was way higher 
than your previous year, and there's a significant change in what you would have projected that to be, this is the chance to talk about why that is. Or on the negative side, if it's less, this is a chance to give that explanation as well. So you are talking to the assessment committee here, so if there's anything on the finances that you think need to be, that needs to be explained clearly, this is your chance to do that. And again, we're gonna save draft here. And we've saved those documents. Uh, they're always there if you want. Uh, there is a section here, application summary. So if you just wanna read through everything you've done so far, click there and you'll be able to read through it as if you were, it was a printed kind of document. It just makes a PDF document. I won't do it now because it may take a little while to pull all that in there, but uh, you can certainly always do that as you're going through there. If you want a quicker and easy way to read it, that's useful to you. And the assessors have that as well. So if they want to read it that way, they can too. All right, so we've saved draft. I'll do that again. The CADAC attachment section. So basically what this says is I'm going to, I'm going to upload these sections for you, but you still have to complete that on the CADAC website. Uh, so they have to be completed there. And what happens is I download a PDF from the CADAC website and upload it here. So I've actually got uh, documents that I can upload, but what I can do is just show you if you've never seen the CADAC form before, if you're a new applicant, here's, uh, here's a brief look at uh, what the financial form looks like. There we go. So we'll make it nice and big so you can see it. So this is the, the revenue section. So this is earned revenue. This isn't all the revenues there. This is just the earned revenue section, but uh, there'll be you know, uh, grants, uh, municipal, federal, uh, provincial, uh, uh, private funding. So corporate support, fundraising, all of that will give a full view of your full revenues as an organization. But it does show you some of the detail that they go into as far as uh, each line. So it is a very detailed form. So be aware of that. And, uh, and here's the expense section. So again, this is just artistic expenses. It will have administrative expenses. It will have uh, capital expenses and information like that as well. And staffing, uh, a lot of information. So it, it is important to uh, just get some sense of what they look like. And this is on the help section when you go into the CADAC website. So this is just helping how to fill out the uh, form online uh, and instructions for that. Uh, but uh, it, it'll at least give you a sense of what you'll see once you get on CADAC and have a sense of what that looks like as well. And uh, you see it goes through. And then here we have like accumulated surplus deficit, your surplus deficit for the year, and accumulated surplus deficit. So these are and unrestricted current assets, uh, unrestricted assets, unrestricted net assets, that kind of information. This is the information that will be in your financial statements that CADAC staff will pull into this document as well and confirm that they're correct. So you'll be doing all these. Now the first two years of this form uh, will be your actuals. If you're new, there'll be actuals and there you'll have to complete all those and upload your financial statement, your review engagement for the, those two years. Your third year will be your current year and uh, uh, that will be a projection. And then you're gonna do three more years of projections out beyond this. So this is old, this is 2015, but so basically it's a lot, it's six years of data you'll be inputting, of detailed data you've been inputting here. So it's a lot of work, be aware of that upfront. Uh, but once you get the first year done, everything else is just updating after that. So your current year, when you get your financials on that, you'll update those to make them final. CADAC staff will review only your final years, so the ones that are supported and that you have a financial statement uploaded with. So they will reconcile those to confirm that the information in the financial statement is correctly input into the forms here. If it isn't, they will contact you themselves and say, uh, listen, uh, um, they will literally say line 5170, elections management, uh, add something here, or this, what you have there should be in a different line. They will literally tell you things like that. So it's very detailed, but that's basically how they look. And the other thing I want to show you is the statistical form. So here's a, uh, this again is another section on the help section uh, of, of CADAC, and this breaks down uh, and again, you don't need to log in or, or be a member to see the help section. If you just go to 
the website cadec.ca, you'll be able to see the help section there, and it'll, these forms are, and others are there to give you some guidance. This is just to give you a view of the CADAC statistical form, and it breaks down, which is very helpful, the type of organization you are and the lines you have to complete, because this is a very, very detailed statistical form. I'd also point out that the, uh, uh, and, and you know, and you don't have to do everything as well. Like some of this, like uh, ASOs are art service organizations, so none of my applicants would have to do that. Uh, and you know, if you're visual, here's the here's the section you do: media arts, uh, performance, and literary arts. There's the sections you do. So it's very helpful just to kind of get a sense of what sections you have to fill out. But also be aware of the detail of this. It's a lot of detail, and it's difficult the first time through to figure out where your stats fit because you have your numbers, but where do they fit in this whole thing? So it can be a little challenging, and you may have to run back to your stats and change some things or review them again and pull uh, things out in more detail uh, as well to be uh, to be clear on these. So it's again, it's a lot of work to do these, but uh, it's uh, it's a required document. And of course, the last thing you have to submit on CADAC is your financial statement, which must be a review engagement completed by an independent um, financial professional. So this just gives you a sense of what these look like. And we go back to the application form. Uh, I actually have a download here, and this is for me. You don't download anything here. I do. So I have these. Uh, so I've already done what I would typically do, which is the uh, CADAC financial form. Open that. It's there for your organization. Uh, I'll download again. The statistical form. That is, and one more time, I'll have a review engagement financial statement, which you'll uh, load up to uh, upload to CADAC as a PDF document. Please ensure it is signed by your board. It has to be signed by your board or it is not complete. And this is one of the things I would check if you asked me to look at all your application before you submit it. So that's all there. And we can see now that those are attached. Save draft. And that was work for me. You don't have to do that work. <laughs> you do the big work on CADAC. Uh, and, and I'll do the, the, the easy work of, of uploading it, making sure it's in here so it's, assessors can see it. Now we're going to look at support materials. So there's all kinds of options for support materials. For images, if you have a bunch of images, uh, like your posters or uh, images from your productions, uh, my recommendation is to put them in like one or two documents and upload just those as opposed to it says 20 and that's really more for visual arts like if you're a project and you want to show them the 20 slides but even there uh, it's a lot easier on the assessors if you just put them all in one document and say here's my images uh, you can put them in a word document with labels and stuff too if you want and just save it as a pdf and just upload that uh, and, and that's just easier because it just means that the assessors have to open one document uh, so, I didn't do that. Uh, so, I'll show you. I have my uh, support materials here. And you see, I have images here. So, I have three. So, I'm going to upload these three. But if I was smart, I probably would have put all of these. I, I just want to show you that you can do more than one. Uh, if I was smart, I probably would have put three of these into one document and uploaded just one document. Uh, but at least you can see that if you do have more than one, like, like you may have, like, for example, your posters as one document, your uh, images from your still images from your plays or productions as another document, and uh, and that will be fine. You know, and then say uh, uh, maybe uh, images of uh, uh, your building or something like that uh, as another document. So I've uploaded those. There they are. The uh, other thing I want to show you is for support materials, uh, the uh, online video links. So if you have videos online, you can use those. You can upload up to two. So I have one here. And basically, this is the Word document I'm going to copy. And video links. Yes. Video link one. Paste. And there it is. So it's in there for me now. If I have a second one, I can do that as well. I don't. I'm good with one. Thank you. Uh, the other thing. So I do have a few other things 
in here. So I have like uh, median last season, uh, brochures from last season, artist resumes, who key artists I'll be using that I want to include as well. So I'm going to upload those. And where I'm going to do that is are there other attachments? So if it doesn't fit into video scores, audio files, click other. I just say yes. And basically we'll attach anything. So uh, artist resumes, brochures, and media. Now, sometimes uh, some organizations do like a full report and this is uh, under full season and, and previous season, this would be a good place to do that as well. Now I upload this. And here they are. So I'll do the artist resumes. Short last season. And the media. All right, they're all there. You can close that. And there they are for me. So it's very broad what you can uh, upload here. There's a lot of opportunities. You can do actual short videos. If you have short videos as well, you can upload those. Um, uh, two is, is what we recommend. Uh, a feature length will be a lot. I'd recommend you uh, uh, putting that up on Vimeo or something and having a link to it uh, might be better. Uh, or even if you have a YouTube channel, something that a link to those, is, is, it may be better. Uh, than uh, putting the whole thing here. But if it's a short video and you just want to show uh, like a, a good quality piece of video that you have, then, then sure, use that there. All right, again, we're going to save draft. And that's that, the support material completed. Uh, as far as the amount of support material, my recommendation is to give them enough to keep them interested and to understand what you're doing, but don't bury them under support material. Uh, so just because you can add support material doesn't, doesn't mean you should bury them under it. Uh, give them enough to give a sense and to get excited about the work you're doing and to show that you're doing it professionally, uh, but don't bury them under it. Uh, finally, we're at the declaration. So you simply uh, read through the, the statements here. If you accept them all and then consider all true, you just click here and save draft. There's an upload here for certificate in good standing. That's something I do, and I just basically uh, download a PDF, make a PDF of your um, uh, certificates, uh, your CADOs, certificates uh, and deeds online. I'll download it from there, and that just confirms that you are in good standing and registered as a not for profit in the province of Newfoundland Labrador. So, again, we're going to save draft. Now, I'm going to try to submit this, but it's going to tell me I already submitted one uh, and probably won't let me. Let's try. Oh, it did let me. Okay. So, uh, so, the, so basically the system, if you've completed everything as it should be, the system will give you this message that your submission has been received. And that basically is the first stage of confirming it'll go forward. Also, in all our program staff, so that's me, I will also review everything in your, in your application. And secondly, I'll change the status of your application to um, a peer assessment meeting. And that, then you'll get another email saying that staff has confirmed the eligibility. So this is the first stage. Staff confirming it is the final stage confirming eligibility. And then it will go to assessors uh, to review it. And the system itself will email you, send you a quick email. So it's very important that the email contact on the system is someone who's going to get these emails because it will be Arts and L sending them, not, not me. Uh, so you're aware of that. And also, if your funding, if your application is funded, the system again will notify you by email uh, of that as well. So that is a uh, quick walkthrough uh, of the sustaining program for professional arts organization application form. If you have questions uh, or want more information, please contact me, kmurphy at nlac.ca uh, or by phone, toll free, 1-866-726-2212 or in the St. John's area, 726-2212. Thanks very much for joining me and uh, goodbye. <laughs>